Hey, Oprah. Harry and Meghan said we could be next. We need to talk to you about the Danish royal family. What? Denmark, royal family. Look, people are sick and tired of hearing about the British family's royal drama. People think, you know, we should focus on a better royal family. They're saying maybe Denmark's royal family? Who is having that conversation? Everyone. Hold up, they're so Look, just watch this video we made about the Danish royal family and you'll totally understand that they're better than the British royal family. Welcome to Rope Trotting, where Derek and Mike, an American couple who moved from the US to Copenhagen in 2017. Our channel is all about living abroad and traveling the world. Every Thursday, we drop our most candid advice and tips based on our lives as expats and explorers. For more, be sure to visit our companion site, robetrotting.com, with a link in the description below. Thank God you're here. Today, we're at Amelia Bois Palace, home of the Danish royal family. From the flag over the building behind me, you can tell that the queen is actually in residence. But that doesn't really matter, because today's video is all about the reasons why the Danish royal family is much better than the British royal family. Let's get started. Over my shoulder are the Danish lifeguards. They're basically the bodyguards of the royal family. And every day at noon, they do a changing of the guard ceremony. So if you're ever in Copenhagen, make sure to come to Ameliabor and check it out for yourself. Okay, but before we begin, let's see if I can give you an overview of the Danish royal family in just 60 seconds. Although there were Danish kings before him, the Danish monarchy officially begins with Gorm the Old. In 936, he started an elective monarchy, which somehow always elected the oldest son. His son, Harold Bluetooth, yep, Bluetooth, unified Denmark and converted to Christianity. In 1375, Magda I, the only other female monarch, unified Denmark, Sweden, and Norway into the Kalmar Union. 200 years later, Kristen IV built things, fought Sweden a whole bunch, and nearly bankrupted Denmark along the way. By 1660, Falk III decided that elections and girls were stupid and declared an absolute hereditary male-only monarchy. But in the 19th century, there were no more male heirs, and a succession crisis culminated in Frederick VII giving up absolute power in a new constitution in 1849. Christian X tried to bring back absolute power in 1920, but failed, only to regain popularity as a symbol of Danish resistance during World War II. In 1972, the current monarch, joining Magrata de Anna, became queen. In her family is her husband Henrik, who died in 2018, and two sons, Felix and Joachim. Prince Joachim has two sons with ex-wife Countess Alexandra, Prince Nikolai and Prince Felix, and kids with current wife Princess Marie, Prince Henrik, and Princess Athena. Crown Prince Felix is the heir apparent and married to Crown Princess Mary from Australia. They have four children, Prince Christian, who is second in line for the crown, Princess Isabella, and twins, Prince Vincent and Princess Josephine. While I catch my breath, how about you guys go ahead and subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we drop new videos on Thursdays. Derek, take it away. Now, I'm not going to say anything bad about the Brits, but when it comes to Denmark, the royal family members are extremely accomplished. Let's start with Her Royal Majesty, Queen Margaleta. She speaks five languages. She studied at Cambridge, the Sorbonne, and the London School of Economics. She's also an acclaimed artist and has had her work displayed in galleries and on postage stamps. Did you know that she even illustrated the Danish version of The Lord of the Rings? That's right, she used the pen name Igahild Grathmer and sent her artwork to J.R.R. Tolkien. He was blown away by how much her illustrations matched the style he was going for for the book. Speaking of books, she's also an accomplished translator and has even translated works from French and other languages into Danish. With all of her leftover spare time, she's even designed costumes for the Royal Danish Ballet and other stage performances. Way to go! Another thing about the Danish royal family is they're absolutely passionate about athletics and sport. The family often attends the Olympics, and Conference Frederik is even a member of the International Olympic Committee. He has a personal connection to the Olympics as well, having met Crown Princess Mary at the Sydney Olympics in 2000. The family has even won an Olympic medal, as the Queen's niece, Princess Natalie, won a bronze medal in 2008. But when it comes to athletes in the royal family, there's few better than Crown Prince Frederick. Although he never made it to the Olympics himself, he's an avid sportsman. He's participated in Ironmans and marathons and long-distance cross-country events. In his youth, he was a frogman, which is the Danish version of a Navy SEAL. And to celebrate his 50th birthday, he organized what's known as the Royal Run, where he ran five different races in five different Danish cities, and now it's become an annual tradition. Another great thing about the Danish royal family is they never ever worried about the skin color of their future Danish princes. Now, one of the biggest things that came out of Oprah's interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was that somebody in the British royal family allegedly questioned what the skin color of their baby would look like. 
Now, the Danish royal family got over this a long time ago because the queen's youngest son's first wife was Alexandra, and she was biracial way before Meghan Markle was even on the scene in Britain. In fact, she was born in Hong Kong and is of mixed race Chinese and European descent. And trust me when I say this, nobody ever worried about what their babies were going to look like. And I'll tell you one thing, the answer was good. Their oldest son, Prince Nikolai, you may have seen walking on the runways in Burberry's fashion shows. He's 21 years old and his 18 year old brother, Prince Felix, is already a teenage heartthrob. And another cool thing is that both of them have the title of Prince, so they're already starting out a little bit better than baby Archie. Another fun thing about the Danish royal family is that when countries need a monarchy, they call on the Danes. Denmark is the kind of country that everybody loves, and that's been true throughout European history and geopolitics as well. Denmark is big enough that it matters and has some influence, but not so big that it can upset the balance of power. Now, let me explain. For example, in the 1860s, the Greeks overthrew their monarchy because they were tired of their German-born king. But they still needed someone to lead their country, and they weren't quite ready for real democracy. So this is how the Danish-born Prince William became the Greek King George I. He got to move up in the world from being the second son of a king to being king of his own country. And fun fact, he's actually the grandfather of Prince Philip. Norway took a similar approach. When Norway gained its independence in 1905, they also wanted a monarch for their own. And that's how Prince Karl of Denmark became King Haakon VII of Norway. He offered the Norwegians three important things, a little bit of Norwegian blood, a British wife, and most importantly, a son who is ready to be an heir. And Denmark not only provides kings, but queens also. The King Christian IX was known as the father-in-law of Europe because of his six children, four of them sat on a throne, to his kings, to his queens. His oldest son, of course, became the King of Denmark, and we already mentioned his second son, George I of Greece. But two of his daughters got to sit on thrones also. One married the eventual Tsar of Russia, and the other the eventual King of the United Kingdom. In fact, he would love to have his family come back and visit him during the summer. And when that happened, that meant among his grandchildren, there were five future monarchs of Europe. Playing in the fields of the royal palace were the future kings of Denmark, Norway, Russia, the United Kingdom, and Greece. Now, another reason to get into the Danish royal family is the awesome Australian Crown Princess Mary. Now, Mike already mentioned that she met her husband, Prince Frederick, at the Olympics in Sydney. That was in the year 2000, before William started dating his commoner princess, Kate Middleton. I guess Princess Mary was the original Princess Diaries. Sorry, Kate. Another reason that Mary is such an icon is the amazing charity work that she does. It's all done through the Mary Fondant or the Mary Foundation. Her charity work has impacted the lives of school kids all over Denmark from ages 0 to 8. It fights bullying and is even being implemented in Greenland, Iceland, and Estonia. Her other charity work includes helping families and victims of domestic violence and fighting loneliness throughout Denmark. I guess she's been a little bit busy this year. She's also the first royal anywhere to be an official patron of World Pride. It's going to be held in Copenhagen this year in 2021. Thanks, girl. Another neat thing about Denmark's royal family is they truly are a symbol of the nation. Now, for Derek and I as Americans, there's still a lot of novelty living in a monarchy. After all, we come from a place where our leaders are politicians, and so you always have a case where half the country isn't happy with who's in charge. But we think it's really nice having a national figure that can float above politics, especially in times of crisis. An example of this was during World War II, when King Christian X became a national symbol of defiance in the face of German occupation. Every day, he would ride his horse Jubilee through the streets of Copenhagen without a guard. Additionally, Danes would wear pins with his royal cipher, a C and an X on them, as a symbol of Danish patriotism in the face of occupation. Now, these stories are true, but many legends grew out of King Christian X's rule during World War II. For one, it's been often written that Christian X wore a yellow armband to be in solidarity with Danish Jews. Now, this story isn't true. For one, Danish Jews never wore any yellow armbands or yellow stars, because they were never required to during the occupation. But for certain, King Christian and the Danish government made sure to protect the Danish Jews and in fact organized a heroic operation to rescue them into Sweden. A great story for another video. Another example of this occurred in 2020 when Queen Magda went on TV to tell all of us to wash our hands, stay apart, but make sure that we're in this together. Again, showing the power of a good monarch to help keep a country together in a time of crisis. 
Now, another thing that the Danish royal family has over the British royal family is, well, popularity and support. There was a recent poll that showed 82% of Danes support the monarchy. Now, I'm assuming that the ones who don't will definitely find this video and comment below, but overall, that's a pretty good popularity rate for anybody in any country. Now, I know that any type of monarchy seems a bit antiquated and unnecessary in the modern age, but when it comes down to the Danish royal family, they somehow seem a bit above all of that, while seeming also very down to earth, and the Danish people like this. That's part of the reason why when newspapers cover the Danish royals, it's not quite as sensationalized as it is in the British press. But one big difference between the way that the Danish press handles this and the British press handles it is that these things are taken mostly out of curiosity and almost a little fun, rather than the British press who makes everything a scandal. One of the biggest displays of the Queen's popularity occurs each year on New Year's Eve. At 6 p.m., she delivers a speech from Amelienborg Palace, and the entire nation shuts down to watch together. In the speech, she offers her New Year's wishes to the entire kingdom. She reflects on her summer travels to Greenland and the Faroe Islands, and offers almost grandmotherly advice to the entire nation to be kind to one another, and pause and reflect for the new year. And she always ends the same way. Gold bevad Denmark. God bless Denmark. So, Oprah? Now what do you think of the Danish royal family? See Oprah, we told you. And for you guys who liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you can be notified every time we release a new video on Thursdays. Until then, skol. Skol.